Ground ball up the middle. Escobar's got a base hit. He's turning. He's burning for a second base. Here's the throw. And oh, they got him by a mile. Called safe. I mean, the ball was there waiting for him. And you know what happened? I don't think Kipnis perhaps applied the tag. And so often is the time. If the ball beats you, the umpire will give you the call. Maybe this time Buckner did not. Right at the end of the inning as we were going to break. A pivotal call here. You see him. He'll spike the glove of Jason Kipnis. So he's obviously tagged out but called safe. That directly led to a, a run that has now given Tampa a 4-0 lead. And Matt Albers at the end of the inning just exploded on C.B. Buckner. <laughs> and then Buckner ejected him from the game. Well, you know what? Uh, there is emotion there. When you go out there and, uh, you know, blatantly they, they know he was out. I say I would say he's officially locked in. Now here you go. That's Carrasco. how he ended up. This is how he ended up with a six-game suspension. Carrasco looked like he had fallen down as he delivered the pitch. Certainly, eyebrows are arched in the Yankee dugout after that. But Terry Francona wants to come out to see it was a warning issued. I couldn't tell what Jordan Baker he was gesturing, but it was he didn't fall down. That was intentional. Yeah. That's intentional, and that's what got him into trouble in Kansas City in the start before, and that's why he had a six-game suspension and it got hurt. I'm not sure. Was he ejected, or was he just worn? It's well, not, I, I'll tell you what. If the umpire officially believes he threw at him, I think he can eject him. Normally, the warning comes first. But uh, He you might know. have ejected him. I'm not 100% well, sure. He, he just made a gesture, but I, it was hard to tell. What that gesture? Well, no, McClellan sell him. He's gone. Look at him. He's walking to the mound saying, you're out of here. That's a young umpire there. Baker, look, he's got to explain yeah. it now to the skipper. But he's gone. He was ejected. He obviously felt that was intentional. And, again, he's just coming back from his suspension he had to serve from two years ago and does the same thing. A guy hits a home run, and, and, and then he comes right at him. Euclid didn't hit the ball. He did the right thing. Look at Euclid. He's fine. There you go. You're gone. So he and then Carrasco put his head. Three and two. And it hit him. Wouldn't you know? Now he has something to say. And look out here. A.J. Ellis got out there just as Branky and Quentin got together. Quentin continues to amaze as he consistently gets hit by pitches. It looks like the majority of the players are trying to be peacemakers. The trio of Branky along with A.J. Ellis and Carlos Quentin. Now here comes the Dodger bullpen contingent. Quinton being led away off to the left. And Matt Kemp is irate. Don't touch me, I think he said to Bud Black. Don't touch me, Matt Kemp keeps saying to Bud Black. So Quinton hit again. And a very hot Matt Kemp. Remember very early in the game, the pitch that went over Matt Kemp's head to the backstop? I don't know whether that was the retaliation by Granke, but that's why Matt Kemp is very much involved in this. Gary Hairston keeping him away. So Quentin has been hit at least 109 times in his career. It's virtually impossible, of course, to read minds, but again, Matt Kemp took a pitch right over the bill of the helmet. Now Granke hits Quentin, and the benches erupt. Now let's see the decision. Granke threw his glove down. If we look at the start of all this, as Quentin broke to come out to the mound. So now the players are awaiting the judgment from the umpire. And the first thing the umpire say, clear the field. Bullpen contingents, go back. Now we'll watch Granky and Davey Lopes. 
Rick Honeycutt. We told you we know that Frankie's wife and mother-in-law and father-in-law. Here's the replay, and it got him on the arm. Now Quentin walks and breaks into a run. Granky collides with him. A.J. Ellis grabs Quentin. In comes Sellers and down the order. After that, every man for himself. But of all the irate people on the field, and I can understand that. Look at Matt Kemp now charging in from center field. And Matt really got into a verbal joust with Bud Black as the bullpenners came in. And Matt kept hollering to Bud Black, don't touch me, don't touch me. Nancy Patterson will have to come out and see how Frankie is. And there's A.J. Ellis tackling Quinton, and then it's all lost. And Nancy will walk Frankie off the field. He's telling Ann. Andre Epier about talking to the umpire and Matt is furious and look out here they go again. A.J. Ellis is being restrained. And Matt Kemp right in the middle hollering at anybody who comes close. Dodgers trying. Josh Beckett telling Matt to cool it. This is only the ninth game. There's 153 left. And each hot player out there has to be reminded of that. But I have to believe that pitch that went over Kemp's head on an 0 and 2 count. And then when Granky hits Quentin, they're out. It's that second one. <laughs> it's the top I, know. Of. I know. And that pitch was all oh, no. all the strike. Oh no. You gotta be kidding and me. Bob Melvin is gonna get thrown out, and he has got it. And he deserves. Out. I mean, this is brutal. Is this the one that made the call in Texas? <laughs> is this the same umpire? Well, Bob Melvin, right after the oh. strike was called, he took about three steps out of the dugout and started yelling, and Fletcher took his mask off and he threw him out immediately. But he's got a gripe here. Absolutely. This is ridiculously low. And so this, Bill Mellon just had it up. And this is when you hope the supervisor is supervising because, I mean, this is ridiculous. All day it's kind of been this way, but this is tops the ridiculous part. Now, Pena brings it up, but that's not where you make the call. It's where it crosses a plate and definitely down. And that's a horrible call. I'm sorry. And of course, from the A's dugout and from the Tigers dugout, they're looking at the height. And Bob Melvin, and you can't argue balls and strikes, but he was good doing it and deservedly so because it's been that way a long time in today's game. Balls two strikes. Fastball got him. So Pennington is caught looking, strikes out a second time. First strikeout for Belisario. Ten Diamondbacks have been nailed. Ryu had nine. One out. And Eric Hinsky will now bat for Cole Minter with two on, one out. Six to one Dodgers, bottom of the seventh. And boy, he is hot. I'm not sure if he's been tossed or not. Let's watch. I know he's going to break the bat. And when he does that, then he's tossed. I mean, seriously. Runner on the move. Cut the miss. Go down. Oh, it's hit time. I don't know. The Rays are going to argue that when Hardy put the tag on Kelly Johnson and Joe Madden out there to have a few words on that call. Well, that was a double clutch by Matt Wieters, and we know that the Oriole catchers have thrown out six of seven this year, but Madden is heated, and I don't blame him one bit. So a strikeout and a throw him out on the caught stealing. And Joe Madden not happy one bit. 
And I think Joe's ticked off too. There have been a lot of calls here just in the first 13, 14 games of the season. Close calls that have gone against the Rays. And he's just been ejected by Brian Knight. Parting word for Jerry Davis over there on his way out. Anthony's and Upton is caught looking. BJ with a look back. He struck out for the second time tonight. And he and Sam Holbrook are really going nose to nose now, and Upton's ejected. That conversation was over for a moment. Strack says it was a strike at the knees, and BJ had his say, and he was walking away. And then when Holbrook gave him the brush off and waved his arm, that brought BJ back. Two-two on the way. Ooh, he wanted it. Really try. wanted it. Yeah, sure Cut did. it. Smarja stared in there a couple times, and now he's exchanging words. Wellington Castillo getting in the way. Dale Swain coming out. This Guccione, the home plate umpire, Swain got run, man. Well, this and is Swain. Swain's calling Guccione out for challenging Samarja. Dale. Basically saying, let my guy have a little beef without pulling the mask and get back in his face. Don't be confrontational. And Guccione saying, I'm not going to let him yell at me from the mound. It's kind of a double standard that exists. Hitters get away with a lot more with umpires than pitchers do because when pitchers get after an umpire, they're out there in the middle of the field and everybody in the ballpark sees it. And it's here. Don't rip your mask off. It's as upset as you will see Dale get protecting his starting pitcher. Well, it's a big time, big situation in this game, as I mentioned. Middle of the order, third time in a one run game. Samarja so battling like crazy after getting knocked around early. Looked like he caught the outside corner and just didn't get the call. Strikeouts in the inning for Escalona, both looking, and Cody Ross has been ejected. Chad Fairchild, the home plate umpire, and now Cody is having to be restrained here by Kurt Gibson. And now Gibby has been run. The frustrations mounting here. The Diamondbacks offense struggling. And now Cody Ross and Kurt Gibson have been run here in the seventh. And Ryan Braun called out on strikes and throws that bat up in the air and gets tossed out of the game. He did not even look at Phil Cuzzy. He just tossed his bat about as high as you can really toss it. Yeah, that's, a, that's an automatic. You do that, you're going to be thrown out. There's not even going to be an argument by Ron Renicky over that one. That's just sheer frustration by Ryan Braun. Let's check a look at the pitch. Right at the bottom of the strike zone, you can see the bat flip, and right away you see Phil Cuzzy give Braun the heave ho. It could have gone either way. Because he rings it up and that's an automatic ejection right there. 
Gallardo's pitch count at 65. Facing Chase Headley now. Now in uh, two of his four starts this year, the big inning has really bitten Giovanni Gallardo. Start against the Cardinals. Cruising along and then gave up a crooked number. Gary Darling. Oh, and Ron Riddick, he just got thrown out of this game by Gary Darling. There and Dar Darling ripped his mask off and was yelling into the Brewers' dugout, as was third base umpire Clint Fagan. And Darling throws out Renicky. Yeah, looking for help. I mean, that's clearly a swing. Gary Darling, the home plate umpire, doesn't call it. The Brewers wanted him to ask for a help. He didn't do it. Downstairs now. Two and two to Lurie. That's three call. Breaking ball on the outside corner. Lori turns around and talks about it to Mike DeMiro. He had his say, and he will go back to the dugout. Remember, the Blue Jays are a man short, so they can ill afford to lose anybody by an injection. There's an injection. John Gibbons is out of this game. Lou DeMiro, Mike DeMiro, throws him out. Bottom of the ninth, the 5-5 game. That is a fair ball. Oh. Oh. The runner's got to be out at second. Now they're saying no. My goodness. Kratz is saying that Barmis was out of the baseline. That's why I thought they would call some kind of obstruction or interference there because he was above the baseline. At least that's what I, I thought. Now I know that the runner has to be given an, a, an opportunity to go. But right there. Well, he's saying that he pushed. He's saying that he pushed Barmas. You know, Barmas is walking around with the bat and everything yeah. like that. So the runner will be safe at second. They do get the out at, at first. It's going to go down as 2-6-3. So Walker's up at second base. Charlie Manuel's pointing to the same thing. He's saying he's in this area. Yeah. And normally when you see something like that, when the batter's in the way like that, the catcher gets the benefit of the doubt, I think. Right. He may go here just because. Well, there's a frustration level. He's following, following right now. Mark Carlson's the home plate umpire. He is kind of hanging back a little bit. Yeah. He's letting him, he's giving him the say. But they know umpires and player and managers know what will get them thrown out if they want to do it. Yeah, I think Charlie's saying that there was obstruction. Sure. Uh, but I think Carlson is saying that there wasn't and that Kratz. The only reason there was obstruction because Kratz made contact right. to move him out of the way. Right, that's what he said. You know, it looked like he pushed and put his elbow yeah. out to push him, and I think that's was the initial. Call. Oh, there he goes. Iasonia got him. Yeah, Dan Iasonia throws him out, and now he'll just sit and listen. Iasonia's the acting crew chief in place of Jerry Davis. What's he doing in there anyway? He didn't need to come down here. Of course, I guess he's, he's the acting crew chief. He's going to come down to break it up. He's probably telling him that too. Like, what are you doing here? Charlie is still. Charlie is still uh, letting him have it. I mean, it's not over the top. But he has been ejected from the ball game. So the runner is safe at second. The put out goes 2 6 3 at first. 
Here's another look from the side. He bunts this ball. So he's trying to get to the baseline. Yeah. Well, that's what it is, I guess. He's trying to get to the baseline, and Eric pushed him. Yeah, and Eric pushed him away. So there's no obstruction from that standpoint because the batter needs to get in the path. Francisco struggling, so he's going to drop a bunt down, and it's perfect. Deadens it on that grass. Laurie comes in and fires it, and watch how Edwin hits that one. Watch the replay as he stretches out. And it almost pops out of his glove. He closes it very quickly to record the out. Well, I tell you what, Edwin has really played well, and now the umpires are getting there. This is kind of interesting. It didn't look like it was solicited, but Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, they're probably talking about that ball being snow coned yeah. in the glove. And they're asking each other, do you see that ball hit the dirt and everything else? But Edwin picked it clean. Yeah, I don't think he bobbled it. it. No. He didn't bobble it. And that's the question I think they're discussing right now. It it looked like it almost popped out. But then he closed his glove and then used his bare hand. Watch the ending play here. Stretches out. Has it. Starts to pop out right there, but then he closes it with the other hand and it's good play. That's really interesting because Francisco is across the bag. And if they determine that they did call a bobble, that's right. Oh, They're calling him safe. That's now, not a bobble. No, it's not a bobble at all. He never bobbled it at all. And kind of shown pleading his case with Chad Fairchild. Now Gibbons is going to come out. And Jeff Kellogg is the crew chief. And he, to me, is the one that initiated this discussion. He was at second base. He came in and that is a tough call but umpires are always instructed if you've got something that you think isn't right bring it up and we'll talk about it but Gibbons he's going to get tossed over this yeah yeah and he should because he's got to stick up for his pitcher he's got to stick up for his first baseman this could be two games in a row but they called bobble I didn't see any bobble at all from Edward the and there he gets tossed and Jeff Cobb is walking away and Gibbons I don't blame him one bit. Nope. But the ball may have been sitting on the dirt. And Edwin picked it up. And the thing that allowed them to reverse the call was the fact that Francisco was across the back. And Francisco hustled down the line. I mean, he thought he had a chance for a hit. Yeah, yeah. Or he made a great play. Edwin made a great play. But they called bobble. I mean, he made it with his hands yeah. like it was a bobble, and, and I didn't see that at all. I saw Edwin reach out the ball. The ball didn't go down into the pocket. It was in the webbing. But I think the ball was touching the dirt while it was in the webbing, and that's how they could determine it was a bobble. Take another look at it. Watch the ball. It's on the dirt right there. And you see how he picked it off the dirt? Yeah. And that's how they called a bobble because there was so much of the ball that was in the dirt there. And Francisco was past the bag. And they call him out, and then Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, initiated a discussion between the umpires, and that led to Gibbons being ejected. So Jones gets his 17th RBI. Donaldson almost made a sensational play. And something happened with Kurt Young. And he's talking with Jim Reynolds. And did Kurt Young get thrown out? You know, I bet it goes back to the check or the check swing. Remember on Rymo? The one on one check swing that his old body went around. And I don't know if Delaire can pull it up, but he's coming to the mound. And if he's looking at first, yeah. Well, Kurt right there is talking to only yeah. the first base umpire. And Yeah, he's swinging. That's the that's the right mode swing. That was the second batter. And as I mentioned, that goes from instead of one and two, it goes to two and one. And as Rhymo got the double down the right field line, and that was not called by Joe Reynolds, the first base umpire. 
Oh, up and into Craig, and he's hit by the pitch. And, he's and been Sanchez thrown out. has been thrown out. Immediately ejected from the game. Here comes Clint Hurdle. And he is going to make sure and get his piece. Up and in to Alan Craig, who glared right back at Sanchez. And you have to wonder how long Clint Hurdle stays in this game. You know, this is one of the first times I've ever seen this. And this is what's why I always say when they warn people, it's really, you know, kind of a farce. And now Clint's been thrown out of the ball game also. But you, if you think a pitcher is intentionally is thrown at somebody, you can throw him out without a warning. I know Clint's going out there and said, look at this kid has struggled. He's trying to find his command. He's not trying to hit anybody, but he's trying to keep it out of the sweet part of the bat. And I think that probably is realistic. Right around 300, 304. And Marte is hit by a pitch. That's scary. It's and in the he is uh, frustrated. He thinks. That's never good. That is not good. I'm sure he thinks there's something wrong. And the Pirates cannot afford to have anything wrong with Starling Marte right now. And you immediately think when you got hit in the hands, a lot of bones, fingers, wrist area, and uh, you get hit with a heavy fastball like that in the hand. Um, and you always worry that something might be broken. He's hit again. Lance Lynn has hit him again. And now some barking from the Pirates dugout and Tim Timmons who has already given the hook to two Pirates tonight is getting close to maybe doing it again and this time bench coach Jeff Bannister is in his sights and he's throwing him out. And Banny had his back to him. Banny was walking away. He wasn't even looking at him. Well, Robbie, you're right down there. You're pretty close to Jay Bell, and you're in between the argument. Yeah, Jay Bell is about three and a half, four feet from me right now, yelling at Tim Timmons. And the argument, Jay was saying, hey, why didn't he get tossed? Tim Timmons held out his fingers to just a couple inches apart and said he moved that much. He moved that much, meaning that Starling Marte didn't move or put enough of an effort to get out of the way of that hit by pitch. A couple more words, all of a sudden, Timmons turned around and threw him from the game very, uh, pretty quickly, Tim. Upstairs to Craig. Remember, he was the one that was hit back in the first. That was uh, that was just a sign of a tired arm right there. Breaking ball and just got away from him. Oh, up and in, and on his back, Lance Lynn. And that ball kind of had a run on it, going up and in, but that was one that he's thinking about right now. And Sanchez is hit by a pitch. Third pirate to be hit. Marte twice. And Sanchez here. So actually two people, but there's been three hit batsmen. <laughs> you determine what's intentional. What's the sense of having a warning? I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I think what he's complaining about is that after that home run they got David Robertson up and this is a stall tactic right here because they want him to get in in the eighth inning. You're right on the money and that's what Gibbons is out to talk to the umpire about. Let's go. Nunez was called back to the dugout and they acted as if something was in his eye. Yeah. David Robertson just started to warm up as soon as that ball hit the ground in the bullpen. So Nunez was summoned back to there. Let's flush out your eye a minute. Gibbons and R.A. Dickey both made that point to the umpire. Yeah, very upset with that. Joe Girardi and Eduardo Nunez, we have them on the screen. Pat pointed out that Nunez got something in his eye as soon as the bat <laughs> touched the ball and Overbay hit a home run and then they call him back. Now watch Overbay go back to the dugout. Nunez is in there standing at the top step and see Girardi talking to him at the corner there. Hey, you got something in your eye, right? I can see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go up there. We need some time. We need to get David Robertson a little bit extra loose. So act like you're going to come to the dugout and you got something in your eye. And that's what John Gibbons was upset about and R.A. Dickey. Big yeah. delay. There was a delay. Nunez took a lot of time. Steve Donahue, the trainer, came out to attend to whatever was in his eye and it gave David Robertson a few extra pitches. And Carnacion hits it hard, but there's Nunez. He's got nothing in his eye now. Uh, 
outline drive turned into a double play and that can turn things around Ooh, pretty close right there price thought he had strike three yeah there, there was nothing close about it that is a clear strike I mean that that's a great pitch I don't even think that's borderline I mean I, I just don't know where, where else you want it So it's a 2 2 count. And a tap back to the hill. The flip to first retires the side. So David Price in the Rays dugout. Who's David not happy with the, the ball two call to Dwayne Wise? It clearly appeared to be a strike, and then he got him on the comebacker. That retired the side, and then. Tom Hallian walking up the first baseline B.A. I thought it might be a situation where Hallian was going to say hey sorry I missed that call I'm a human and uh, instead there was a little exchange between Price and Hallian and uh, Joe Madden came out to try to uh, maybe run some interference and there appears to have been an ejection here. I don't blame him one bit. I don't blame what you're you got a frustrated pitcher out there pitching as hard as he can he's been throwing the ball great and he punches out Dwayne Wise on a fastball that was plenty good doesn't get the call and he let him have it and Tom Hallion said your night's over and to which David replied it was anyway and Escobar taps it down beautifully Ortiz fires to third they got him I didn't think there was a chance that they would get him. An awkward throw for the left handed pitcher and a look from up here. Like Garcia was clearly safe. I think uh, Alfonso Marquez saying that Beltre caught that ball for the force out. I thought that Arcia was clearly ahead of the. Uh... Ortiz definitely was thinking first, but I think AJ went out there screaming third base. Fans want an ejection. And the umpire more animated than the manager right now. There he goes. And now the manager is going to get his money's worth. He was out. Yeah. He was out. That's it was not I mean. a good slide by Arcia. Yeah. Well, the button laid down, and Ortiz, I think he heard. Yep. His feet were up in the air. Yeah. They want to slide directly into the bag. That was a good call by third base umpire Alfonso Marquez. So the sacrifice does not work as the Rangers take a bit of a gamble, and it would not have worked, I don't think, if Arcia had slid feet first into the bag. 